Under a cap-and-trade program, the government decides to control emissions of a particular substance, in this case, greenhouse gases. For example, assume the greenhouse gas emissions have risen at this level over the course of recent time and are projected to further increase at this level going forward. The government decides to establish a cap or limit on those greenhouse gas emissions and decides to reduce them over the course of time on a schedule such as this. Now companies that are underneath this limit could sell their allowance permits which they need to in order to stay in compliance to companies that were over the limit. That is the basis of the cap and trade program allowing the free market system of those being under to sell to those that are over. However, one concern is that under a cap and trade program many companies in the absence of technologies to make near-term large reductions of greenhouse gas emissions might find themselves more on this path with only a few companies being under the reduction limit. In this case, there would not be nearly enough allowances for sale to those that were over the limit, and this could cause prices to skyrocket. Similarly, you might find a situation where many companies were under the limit, and only a few were going to be over the limit. In this case, there would be too many allowances, and prices would crash. Both of these would have significant impacts on the uh, effort of the program to reduce greenhouse gas emissions over the long term and on the market price of those allowances. One way to control fluctuating prices under a greenhouse gas cap and trade program is through the use of a price collar. Assume that under the cap and trade program this might be the optimal price path of greenhouse gas allowances over the course of the program, gradually escalating and allowing for the deployment of technologies as the price goes, uh, increases over the course of time. However, as we discussed, you might have a situation where there's not nearly enough supply in the early years, perhaps too much supply in later years, and a situation where the price of those allowances continues to fluctuate wildly. This, of course, would have dramatic impacts on consumer prices when the price was too high, and then dropping to very low levels in years where there were too many, making it difficult for consumers to do any planning. It would also severely increase the cost of compliance under a greenhouse gas cap and trade program and the potential impacts on consumers. One way to control this wildly fluctuating price is through the use of a price collar. Under a price collar, a floor price is established that might be somewhat below the optimal path, but one that would certainly ensure that technology uh, investment continues at this rate and provides a steady investment path for deploying clean energy technologies. At the same time, you'd have a price ceiling that would escalate at a slightly higher rate over the course of time to minimize the impact of these wild price spikes. When the price ceiling was triggered, extra supply would be or extra supply would be made available by the government and when the price floor was triggered, that supply would be withdrawn by the government to help keep the prices in line. These prices would allow for steady investment planning for investment in things such as electric generation and would also help provide a steady and predictable price path for the program and therefore for consumers while allowing the program over the course of the time to meet its overall reduction objectives. Again, a price collar involves both a floor price that would gradually escalate over the course of time and a price ceiling gradually escalating over the course of time.